Hi, thanks for joining me today. I'm Jacob Tarowski, Director of Enterprise Architecture here at CCB Technology. Today, we're gonna to take a look at MFA, what it is, why it's important, and some key aspects of what to look for when choosing an MFA solution. And then I'll be running through a quick demo to show how easy it can be for your staff to utilize MFA in a few different ways. I wanna start by mentioning that every environment is different and every environment has its own set of challenges, compliance requirements, and intricacies. Further, a successful MFA implementation involves not only the MFA solution itself, but also an in-depth review of the unique applications and systems and other resources that need to be integrated. This presents the first and largest hurdle when taking on any MFA project. You need to ask yourself, what resources are you trying to protect? And what additional security requirements do you want to put around those resources? From there, you can look to build out a list of requirements to test your desired MFA solution against and what to start vetting out to make sure that things will work inside your organization. As with any security solution, it's often hard to fully enumerate a set of best practices, but with MFA, a baseline is pretty simple. You should look to try to implement it wherever possible. So with that, let's dive in and unpack a little bit more about what FM MFA is. MFA stands for multi-factor authentication. The idea here is that, as the name implies, is that you're using more than one factor or type of authentication mechanism to validate who you are. You may have heard this also referred to as 2FA or two-factor authentication, which kind of falls underneath the umbrella of multi-factor. The key concepts are really the same in that you're requiring two or more factors in order to complete the authentication process. The factors that I'm referring to here fall in three categories, uh, something you know, something you have, and something you are. We'll break those down in just a minute, but when it comes to authentication, the key security premise uh, is this. The more factors you use, the harder it is to bypass the authentication. In order to better understand why MFA is important, let's quickly talk about these three categories for authentication. We'll start with the most common, which is something you know. Everyone is familiar with this category. It's the one that's most often used when, when the authentication process traditionally only requires a single factor. These are your passwords, personal identification or PIN numbers, and even things like the answers to your security questions. Uh, this is not only the most common factor, but it's typically also the most basic. Over time, authentication systems have created more robust requirements for passwords, like increasing the length, requiring numbers, symbols, and things like that in hopes of creating more complex passwords. And while this has been somewhat successful, it's also driven many people into poor password management practices like writing things down on a post-it note, or even worse, using the same password for multiple resources. Because of these vulnerabilities, it's also the factor that's most frequently exploited by social engineering, phishing, and other means. While the other two categories may seem self-evident from their name, I wanna clarify what they mean in regards to authentication. So something you have relates to tokens, could be a physical token, could be a software token on your phone. We'll show that in a little bit. Uh, could be a security badge. Something you are is most related to your biometrics, your fingerprints, retina scans, even facial recognition, all the way up to some more advanced ones like behavior analysis, typing patterns, keyboard dynamics, things like that. So at its core, MFA is really the process of combining multiple factors from these categories in order to provide a stronger authentication process to validate who you are. One very basic example of MFA that you're probably familiar with is when you use your debit card at an ATM. Process requires your card, something you have, as well as your PIN, something you know. So why is all this important? Password reuse, phishing, and other attacks are only becoming more and more prevalent in today's age. And with more and more of the workforce becoming distributed, the attack surface is larger than it's previously ever been. You used to have a base level of protection and security for uh, that your users had when they were in the office, simply behind your corporate firewall on secure Wi-Fi, and had those other protections that were shared with it. But now as users are working from home or other places with public Wi-Fi, like a cafe, there's a larger chance that their systems or accounts may be exposed or compromised. Adding MFA can help mitigate these types of attacks and others, and simply by including a, another factor in your authentication process means that even if your credentials are leaked, fished, or otherwise compromised, the threat actor would also then have to acquire your phone, a hardware token, or possibly even your security badge to actually gain access. 
So I hope you can see how this can dramatically improve the security of your environment and reduce the impact of a possible breach within your organization. Um, in this case, a you know acquisition of credentials doesn't necessarily directly relate, relate to a security breach. They need that second factor uh, or sometimes third factor to actually get access into the environment. In a report surveying companies globally, published by LastPass in 2019, so even prior to all of the COVID and remote work situations and hybrid situations that we're in now, it indicated that there was a 12% increase in companies utilizing MFA at that time, bringing the total up to 57% of all the companies that were surveyed. So not only is MFA something that you should be doing, but in this case, you might actually be in the minority if you're not which gives further emphasis to show the importance of a strong MFA solution as part of your overall authentication process. So what makes a good MFA solution? One of the key things that security professionals are always exploring is the concept of security versus usability. And typically when a process is highly secured, locked down, uh, it's often quite complex and typically not very user friendly. So a huge factor in implementing a successful MFA solution is to find something that strikes a good balance between these two. It drives user adoption and acceptance and actually gets the process out there so that people are using it and taking advantage of the additional security that it brings. So some of the things that can help you uh, make it easier for your users are things like single sign-on. You've probably heard this before, right? But it's the idea that it reduces the overall number of logins and sign-ins that your users experience. So even though there are more steps with uh, multi-factor, you're doing it less times. So you sign into a single portal, and then from there, you can access a bunch of additional resources without actually having to authenticate a second, third, fourth, or more, right? Another option is to be able to do push notifications. So instead of getting the traditional key fobs that you had and plugging in an OTP and not typing it quite right or not getting the timing down, all of those things that we've experienced if you've worked with MFA at all in the past, a push notification just shows up on your phone and you just hit approve or deny, depending on if approve, obviously your user is signing in or deny they're not aware of where that request came from. So in regards to functionality, among those things that can help drive adopt, uh, adoptability of it, a good MFA solution also supports a variety of applications and protocols, such as RADIUS in order to integrate with your Wi-Fi, your switches, and your other network infrastructure. Supports SAML, that's the backend authentication mechanism and protocol uh, that works with all these single sign-on things that we're mentioning, all these web applications. Uh, something that supports LDAP, uh, an integration with a directory structure so that you don't have to manage active directory and then also a separate directory structure, uh, user structure, uh, names and everything like that for single sign-on um, or, or multi-factor. And then something that can be adaptive that has some conditional and risk-based access or other policies that you can use to tailor how your solution actually handles the authentication requests. Great example would be, we don't prompt users when they're in the office. If they're in the office, it's assumed that they're behind a secure location and they're not necessarily being prompted for MFA every time unless they've triggered some sort of risky sign on. However, they do get that every time that they are out of the office and that they are remote. If they're at home, if they're in another location, they do get that second factor uh, to be prompted on their phone. So within all of that, one of the solutions that supports all of these things and has a, a pretty extensive list of well-tested uh, and vetted integrations is WatchGuard OffPoint. And as I mentioned, not uh, only is everyone's environment different, but it's also sometimes difficult to show the direct uh, integration and tie-ins without potentially exposing a bunch of sensitive information on the back end. But I did want to show you a quick example here of what MFA could look like in your environment. I'm going to show an SSO portal that they can sign in and see a list of some sample applications, as well as a VPN connection for remote access into the environment. So if you give me just a second, I will get these things shared out here from a couple of these screens. And we will go in and take a look. All right, so I have a desktop pulled up here and I'm gonna go ahead and sign in with my test user and ask me for username and then I'm gonna go ahead and do a password. And then you'll notice here right away that it comes up and the option here says send push. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit send push and I'm also going to switch you then to my mobile phone so that you can see what this push notification looks like here as that gets sent across. So on there, I hit send push. You can notice there I get an option. I'm going to go ahead and hit approve. And I'm going to go ahead and switch back over to the laptop that went ahead and signed in. And so you can see here, I get a list of applications, uh, Citrix as an example, Salesforce, uh, directly into the firewall for an application for internal resources, um, things like that. So this is an example here of an SSO portal. You sign in one time, you get that multi-factor prompt, and then you're able to go ahead and access all of these resources without having to authenticate uh, a second time. I'm also gonna show here then an option for uh, connecting to a VPN. So this is gonna be very similar. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, plug in credentials here and then switch you over to the mobile. And you'll see here again, we'll get a push notification comes in and we go ahead and hit approve. And then if we switch back over to the VPN, uh, you'll notice here it's gonna go ahead and connect. Uh, it's building all its routes and everything like that. Uh, successful connection here. And then it's gonna go ahead and uh, connect. And there we are, we would be all set down here. We have a successful connection in our taskbar and away we go. And so from there, um, it's as simple as that. Basically it gives you the option to um, add an additional factor in there for what we're looking at for applications. Uh, gives us an option to connect into here from a VPN perspective and integrate that into our systems to provide those additional factors for us. So it could be a push notification uh, that requires internet access. If you were offline, uh, there is a one-time password that shows in the application that you can go ahead and pull up and punch into your computer. Um, and so we can integrate that to give us additional security in our environments. So hopefully that was helpful for you to give you a quick overview of MFA and how simple that could be uh, from that standpoint for your end users. Uh, if you have any questions about what applications might be supported by OffPoint uh, or how you would integrate that into different solutions, not just with a WatchGuard firewall, but with FortiGates, with Cisco's, with Palo Alto's or anything like that, uh, definitely feel free to reach out. But hopefully this was helpful to give you a brief overview of what MFA is and how it can fit into your environment.